afternoon, Pastor Eve was able to minister to the women, and it was such a joy to sit down there and just watch their faces. There were women of all ages. There was a lot of grandmothers there. There was young women there. Uh, there was, you know, just the hunger that were on these women. And uh, I'd never been into a room, and I said before, it was just so packed jam-packed and hungry. The conference, there was supposed to be 200 women because, you know, limited space. Uh, but they ended up probably three to four, I don't know. But they were, uh, it's just, they're amazing people because like the, uh, even the ties and stuff, they can sit on a hard, you know, ground, hard tile uh, for hours. And there was no room to even hardly walk between them to get up to the front to be able to share with them. And they, they just packed in. Uh, and they were just so hungry. They sat, they didn't move for hours at a time. And they were just wild for prayer, like wild for prayer. So we had promised the women that we would pray for them individual, everyone in the room. And it took uh, around two hours to do that. But we had them line up in two. And the, 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 the desire to have a blessing from God, being touched from God, uh, they were just coming at us, and so actually they had a form like a human chain around the stage so the women couldn't come up. They could only come through one way, and we began to pray for the women. We saw women healed. We saw women uh, set free, delivered from spirits. We saw uh, just uh, the presence of God on these pastors, uh, these women that are passing the church. It's just the oppression left off on them. How God wants to heal the people of Vietnam, and I guess that's why uh, I want to go and I wanted to be part of what was going on because even from Canada that we are healing to the nations and certainly Viet Vietnam is a nation that needs healed and God is the healer. One thing that was on our hearts that it, we saw was the need of Bibles uh, in their language and so we had purchased a bunch of Bibles so we decided the next day we're going to get them out. So the next day it came and we began to share and we had up on the stage behind us all these Bibles piled up. And uh, we asked the women, Eve asked the women to stand, those that didn't have a Bible. And there's a good portion that stood up that had no Bible. And uh, we began to pass out these Bibles. Oh my goodness, I'll tell you the hunger, these, these hands reaching out and just grabbing hold of these Bibles. And women showed me their Bibles that were so battered and so bruised and so well used and we placed them with new ones. And, and then we began to give women who had Bibles, but I was like, everybody, I think a good portion of that room didn't have their own Bibles and that joy that was in them on just having the Word of God. We just taught on heart conditions. We taught on the Word of God and the hunger that were on these women. My goodness, I'll tell you, I just, I've never seen it anywhere else. You could just see things clicking as you began to preach. You could just see God putting things in them. So it was very, it was about healing and it was about who they are in Christ and uh, that they're a blessing on the earth and God has not forgotten them and that God is doing something in Vietnam. I want to say to our churches in Canada, you know what, we don't stop here. We had a tremendous conference, the Word of God has gone out to these women, but now is the time to pray for them. It was tremendous, and it was a joy for us to say, we're not going to say goodbye, we said we're going to see you soon. And as we went out the door, all these women began to touch us and hug us and give us kisses and, and uh, just wrap their arms around us, and they were saying to us, see you soon, see you soon, see you soon. And we are believing God that God will make a way and we will go back in to that nation of Vietnam. Is persecution the secret ingredient to church growth, or an enemy the church needs to withstand? Up next on Continuum, an underground church leader gives her response to suffering. This summer, be a part of a new missions experience that will open your eyes to the world and change your whole perspective about how missions work is done. Seven weeks to change the world, seven weeks to change you.
Are you hungry for more Great Commission adventures? www.continuummedia.com brings you breaking news from the heart of Southeast Asia. Learn firsthand what God is doing in some of the most exotic and dangerous places on earth. Meet the people and uncover the stories that are advancing God's global kingdom through Great Commission exploits in nations like Thailand, China, Cambodia, Vietnam, Pakistan, Malaysia, and the Philippines. www.continuummedia.com will take you there. Scripture has a lot to say about persecution and suffering. The Bible guarantees persecution as a reality of Christian living. And suffering is described as a press that molds God's character in us. But the church has an enemy, and timidity and oppression are not to be confused as God's will for our lives. Deborah, a church leader in Vietnam, describes how suffering reveals our heart condition towards God and God's perfect faithfulness towards us. He used a, a, a disaster to bring us out of our spiritual disaster. So many times, when at first we cry and we we uh, first uh, we terrifying, but after that we can say that he trained our arms to fight. <laughs> he he meet to he bring us through fire and through water, but it will not no harm, and just we can come out a better a better person, uh, and to see that Christ be uh, his nature be forming us. And, and we can see the foolishness of ourselves. When I saw the, the goodness of the Lord, I saw the, the wickedness of myself. I, when I saw uh, His uh, f faithfulness, his, we, I saw how rebellious I was. And so we, in His light, we saw the truth about ourselves. I thank God for He given me a chance to, to know Him in, through the difficulties and to experience him and his word of his faithfulness. Well, this is a place noted really for so much suffering. We're in Ganshanapuri city here, and this is kind of the beginning of the death railway story, and actually where a lot of the grave sites for the POWs, mm -hmm. Allied POWs from World War II, or thousands of them were killed here building yeah. this railway. We're actually at the, at the train station, the mm -hmm. present train station in the city of Ganshanapuri, and today we're talking about, you know, the Vietnam church mm -hmm. and, and suffering and the, the kinds of suffering and those kind of things. And um, so we really, you know, you were in Vietnam, Becky, and had a great time there, obviously, and can share some insights into kind of the attitudes and the heart that the people have there. Yeah. Well, I found it a little bit surprising when I went there. It was my first experience being anywhere where the church is persecuted to this degree. I haven't been to Pakistan. I haven't been to China. So the, the picture I had in my mind of the persecuted church and the suffering church of Jesus Christ was a little bit different than what I met there uh, because the church was so aggressive, you know. They were not, uh, they had an attitude that they were determined that they were not going to be intimidated. They right. were not going to back down from believing in Jesus or from their rights to even hold public and religious services. And so I found it very surprising because the first day that we actually had the conference, we had the secret police come and they turned off our power and they just tried to do a number of things to kind of intimidate the believers there, even though they legally had a permit to worship. And uh, Pastor Moses and the other pastors and the other leaders that were there were just right in those guys' face, you know. Yeah. It was that we respect the government and, and we have a right attitude towards the, the government, but at the same time, that that kind of intimidation and that kind of persecution that comes to silence the church was wrong, and they were not yeah. going to have any of and it. Particularly in a, a country like Vietnam, which they are proud of their, or they advertise their freedom of religion mm -hmm. as part of their constitution. Well, and this is one of the key things, really, when it comes to the persecution and the suffering. Uh, it really is the attitude of the people that are subjected to yeah. that kind of suffering. And, 